welcome to the winter wonderland that is Patagonia, where Mother Nature is the boss and she'll kindly offer any of her visitors a kaleidoscope of vistas. I boarded the Australis expedition cruise ship in Ushuaia, southern Argentina. We spent four days and nights weaving in and out of the Beagle Canal and the Magellan Strait. I got up close and personal with penguins and glaciers. I learned all about the ecosystems and the geology of the region. But most importantly, I reached the most southern piece of land on the planet. Well, before the South Pole, of course. Okay, so I think I finally found a quiet spot on the ship. We're basically, if you look on a map and you look at the very end of South America, go right to the little bottom of that point and there's a tiny little rock there called Cabo de Orno. Basically, this is Cabo de Orno. So there is no piece of land that's more south than where we are right now. Next stop is literally Antarctica. And the ship is being smashed by the waves. It's like proper Antarctic weather, what you'd imagine. I'm freezing standing here. I, the, like, the head is literally blown off. But I just wanted to check in with you and give you a little look around and let you know that I've literally reached the end of the earth. I'm so excited. <laughs> we'd get off the ship at a different location where we could either hike up a mountain or trek alongside a glacier and our guides would teach us all about the history and the culture of the region. This one, it's built by one of the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable persons that I know on Yagans that lives in this island. This stunning scenery belongs to Ulaya Bay. This is exactly where I had my Patagonia moment which basically means I burst into tears with emotion just from the striking beauty of the scenery. And of course, getting to play Fast and Furious on the Zodiac was a daily highlight. Vroom, vroom. Punta Arenas, maybe use helicopters, conditions are totally different. So, hard for the climatologist and not for the farmer. I couldn't wait to stop to have a little chat with you to fill it in. So, right behind me here, look where I get to be today. This is my office. <laughs> um, right behind me is the Pia Glacier in Chile. And the glacier's been here basically since the last ice age, so anywhere between 12,000 and 120,000 years ago. So this has seen a thing or two in its time. Now our guide from Astro Australis Expedition Cruise has been so good. He's taken us for a walk around the mountain. Have a look, take in the views. I know, right, this place is really like something of a postcard. This is Patagonia. So we're in Chile, we're on the Chile side of Patagonia and down the very little tip of that South American point. That's where I'm filling you in from today. But the guide has also been telling us that this glacier is actually getting like thinner, shallower due to, I suppose, climate change and global warming. And he was saying that sometimes they actually find pieces of float and ice. See all this stuff down here, let me show you. So sometimes they actually find pieces of these float and ice cubes that are two to three meters high out of the water. And they're basically, they're basically caused by carving. So when a big chunk falls off the glacier, like, whoa, we did get to hear one a while ago, but my camera wasn't switched on, so I'm sorry. But they call this carving when the glacier shaves a piece of itself off. And this is a particularly active glacier, so it happens quite regularly. So I will keep my finger on the buzzer, and if it happens, I should hopefully get a shot for you, all right? Let's go 
back on board for a Chocolate Magallanico, aka hot chocolate with whiskey. Iceberg right ahead. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome, people. This is the Garibaldi Fjord, and we have right there the Garibaldi Glacier, one of the very few glaciers actually growing in South America. It's growing so fast and so rapidly that in just two years took the place of another glacier that is called Picos Azules right over there. So the other glacier now instead of melting it's putting all his eyes on the current of the Garibaldi glacier. Now ladies and gentlemen let's take it to the bridge. Hola Capitan! Hello! <laughs> and after a tough day at the office, no better barista than Manuel to present you the perfect Patagonian potion. Salud! Hombros, shoulders, very loose, very loose. One word. The other one, both together. Okay, sure we leave them at that and we'll go meet Aguila Glacier. Hi there. We are now at the Dainelli Glacier, also called Aguila Glacier by Australis. This glacier is a hanging glacier. This is not anymore in contact with the water. It used to be uh, in contact with the water uh, some uh, centuries ago. But now, as you can see, the, the glacier is hanging from the rocks. There used to be also a lake in front of the, this glacier. You can see it from here. It's no longer a lake because this lake is now in contact with the fjord. That's the Agostini fjord. <laughs> At the back, we can see some mountains. The Darwin Mountain Range. Darwin? Yes, he did just say Darwin, as in the Mr. Charles Darwin, who visited this region on his expedition in the 1830s. It was on this actual voyage that Mr. Darwin devised his theory of evolution. Now, I feel like the only thing that can top Darwin are singing penguins. <laughs> But first, let me take a selfie. <laughs> Meet Mr. Magellan Penguin. These penguins are typical to Argentina, Chile and the Falkland Islands. And unlike every other species of penguin, these guys do not remain monogamous throughout their lifetime. Now some might say that's typical of those Latinos, eh? But I say hashtag joking. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I get my coat.